welcome back to my channel. I'm Soy, a UX designer at Google. I hope you like my new studio settings and I'm excited to make a behind the scene video one day in the future. If you click on this video, that means you care a lot about your relationship with your engineering partners. And this is a good sign that you're developing a trusting relationship with your close working partners. The designer developer handle process is complex and sometimes just gets everyone who's involved a little bit frustrated. Today, I would like to show you my process of handing off designs to engineers with real examples and the tools I use to make this process a lot more efficient. Here's the project I would like to use as an example, and I hope this is going to help Help you ensure a smooth design handoff. I'm also offering one-on-one -on -one career coaching, so if you want to get more career advice, do a mock interview, or just talk about career development in general, please use the link down below to book a session with me. Okay, without further ado, let's get to the beef of this video. Before talking about the specific of design handoff, I would like to share some tips for working effectively with eng partners. And this is also going to help you prepare interview questions like how do you work with engineering partners? In my experience, the most important thing to do is to involve your eng partners as early as possible in your design process and show your design often with them. Because you could create as many pretty designs as possible, but eng are the ones who's going to make your design come to life. So you don't want to work hard in silo and then get told by engineering partners that, hey, sorry, your design is too fancy to implement. How about we just go with the MVP versions and launch it? So how early and often should you involve eng partners in your process? For me, I would usually involve engineering partners since the beginning of a project. If you have the habit of doing a workshop or a working session to kick off a project, I would highly recommend you inviting them to those meetings. They are the ones who could heavily influence if your design could be built, when to ship, they know how feasible something is and all the technical constraints of building it. So you would want to get their input and solicit their feedback early on. This would also help you to remove the blockers further down the road when it was too late to change directions. And oftentimes I have worked with engineers who are not just coding ninjas, but they also have pretty good taste for a design and are pretty good at contributing awesome ideas that would help create a seamless user experience. So just treat engineering partners as your friends. I already forgot how many cups of boba tea I have promised to my Ange friends in order to get their buy-ins of building some of the fancy designs I've created. I know the name list is super long and the promise is always verbal, but for my end friends who is watching this video, just know that I do care a lot about building a trusting relationship with you guys and boba tea would just make our relationship shallow, so let's forget about boba. As for your engineering friends' opinions in design sprints and working sessions, because their early feedback is going to help you iterate design and generate more ideas in a productive and viable way. Next, I would like to go over my process of handing off designs to engineers. Usually, I would break it down into pre-mox handoff and design QA. Today, let's focus on the pre-mox handoff stage first. In this stage, usually I would hold a design handoff meeting with engineers in order to socialize the finalized design and spec, answer any questions from engineers, and reach an alignment on timeline and feasibility of design implementation. There are a few things engineers would need more details on, for example, user flows, different states, use cases, component choices, spacings, paddings, and accessibility specs, etc. I'm going to walk through some of them one by one to demonstrate what I would cover in a design handoff meeting. To clearly communicate with engineers how users can interact with the screens and navigate from one screen to another, it's very important for me to provide a bird's eye view of the product by showing different user flows. If I just group the mocks by key product features, it might be a bit scattered and it's hard to tell how the screens relate to each other. So you could consider either using arrows and lines to connect the dots and visualize how users can go from screens to screens or creating an interactive prototype that allows Eng to put themselves into users' shoes by freely exploring a simulation experience in the prototype. 
However, sometimes I know it's very painful to finding the right arrows and lines to create user flows in Figma. As a designer, I know many of us are perfectionists by heart, so we would unconsciously spend the extra time and energy in selecting the right arrows and lines and linking all the screens in the proper way. The truth is, we should have spent our time wisely, and there's no need to go above and beyond on this. I would like to recommend a tool that will help you to create user flow in an effortless way. The tool I use is Jimu, which is the sponsor of today's video. Jimu is a visual communication tool that can help enhance communication efficiency between designers and developers, making the communication process smoother and more efficient. They provide super easy to use screen capture features. With Gmail Snap, you could do scrolling and element capture, capture from browsers, selected area and visible area capture. I would usually use selected area to get a screenshot of the mocks I want to use in the user flow. Then I will click on edit and use this built-in arrow tool to mark out how users can navigate from one screen to another. Guys, trust me, this type of arrows are clear enough to demonstrate to end how user flows works. You don't need to download a um, Figma plugins for arrows and lines or worry about the craftiness of lines components, and you don't need to worry about how properly they are laid out. What's also cool about Jimu is that it allows you to add annotations anywhere in a screenshot. Annotation is a key part in my design spec. I use annotations to convey behaviors, different states, and design changes. Annotations in design can remove a lot of uncertainty about how experiences work. And the best thing about them is that they're right there in context. So this is the behind the scenes series. I like that Jimu's annotation is similar to comment, which allows users to contextually follow up a specific annotation if they have any questions. We shouldn't annotate everything because annotating takes a lot of time and effort, and the more annotations there are, the less important they become. However, there are some specific scenarios where adding annotations may be useful. Showing error and edge cases, describing off-screen experiences, and tracking changes and decisions. Additionally, creating a video of a prototype to walk through interaction details and user flows is basically taking design head off to the next level. If we're just looking at static mocks and arrows and lines, it might be still a little bit unclear to us how certain user flow works. However, if you want to save your office hour time of answering questions about your spec, you might want to create a video to record how users can interact with the screen and how they can navigate from one screen to another. Thank God, Jimu has awesome video recording features. You can just voice over, record just the screen, or record both your screen yourself. I would use the screen plus camera feature as I do want to voice over and elaborate on how the flow and interactions work for better clarity. If you think this is not a big deal, let me tell you something else. Jimu is completely free. There's no cost, my friend, and Jimu has everything you need in the design handle process, and you should definitely go ahead and check it out. In design handoff, I would also walk through edge cases and interaction states, demonstrate how to inspect spacings, paddings, and component choices, and point to edge where to find the components from a Figma component library and the code library. Usually, I would create a checklist to list out all action items and helpful links I would want edge to know. Jimu has this awesome documentation feature, which allows you to create a design handoff checklist with little effort. You can specify a text style just by one click instead of choosing font size and family from a long list. Also, it allows you to include everything essential for Edge to know about the design. For example, you could add the user flow with annotations to the doc and include links to Figma, component library, and code library. I really like that Jimu is a one-stop shop for everything so that you don't need to juggle different applications around to effectively communicate with Eng in a design handoff process. Since a lot of UI elements inspection skills are needed in every project, and I want to improve design handoff meeting efficiency instead of repeating the same topic again and again, what I have done in the past was creating a deck to document all the Figma best practices for engineering and present it with our engineering team. In the presentation, I covered topics like how to use the Figma inspect tool to inspect spacing, paddings, and sizing, and how to export assets in different formats. I will make another video to do a deep dive on Figma best practices for engineering and what to include in a share out with Edge.
so this is everything I would like to share with you all today. Thank you so much for watching. If you think this video is helpful, please give it a thumb up. On my channel, I'm dedicated to all things about career development and job interviews. So if you're interested in this content, make sure you hit the bell button and subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss my future content. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.